how the industry is changing. So I feel like the first thing I would say there is just that, like, in a sense, the industry is always changing. And I, I say that because I feel like with so many things, it's almost too easy for us to get freaked out um, and feel like something new is happening or whatever. And sure, something new is happening in some ways, but it's always been changing. I've been, I'll be in this space six years come next end of next month. Um, and it's changed so drastically and so vastly, um, in so many ways since I've been here. And so, um, yes, there are changes happening right now, but change has also been the constant. So just like keeping that perspective, I think is really, really helpful where it's not like something crazy is happening now. That's never happened. It's like, this is always happening. This is just another iteration of that. Does that make sense? Hey, Jessica, thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate you. Um, so yeah, this is just another iteration of that. Actually, if you're here, I would be so curious how long you've been uh, in this industry, because I feel like that's just always so interesting too, and so helpful to have that perspective. So if you're watching live or the replay, feel free to tell us how long you've been in this industry. Again, mine will be six years going on end of next month. Um, so like so much change has happened over that time, but that doesn't mean that's a bad thing. Jessica says eight months. Okay, good. Right. So like Jessica, this is why it's so important. I think to hear this, to have this conversation, uh, publicly in this way, because when you've only been in it for eight months and you haven't seen like a lot of big changes and stuff, it can feel like, oh my gosh, something is going wrong, or I'm going to miss the boat or whatever, because you just don't have the benefit of like, you know, six years under your belt of being like, oh, this shit happened. So anyway, thank you for sharing that. And also exactly why we're having this conversation because it's so freaking important. Um, so what I feel like I want to start with is just saying some things that I've seen change recently and normalizing that. <laughs> I feel like some of them are going to be scary to hear, but I think it's also going to be good to hear uh, because of the reasoning behind what I just said, which is that like, it's really nice to know it's not just us. Um, so a couple of things that I'm seeing changing, shifting, that kind of stuff is that um, I think fast organic growth is just harder than it's ever been. Uh, so let's just call that what it is. Um, again, all of this is broad generalization. I'm not saying fast organic growth can't still happen. I'm not even saying I don't have clients that that's happening for, but I'm talking like, like, macro versus outlier kind of thing, like norm versus outlier. Um, so I think fast organic growth is just harder. I think a lot of the platforms are making that harder. Um, and I think they're doing it purposefully, which I don't know is a bad thing. I think, you know, they're realizing how much people are um, hacking the platforms, trying to kind of, you know, make that happen in a way that isn't using the platform how it's meant to be used as a social network, that kind of stuff. And so I do feel like a lot of the platforms are making that more challenging and how the algorithms are and how they're presenting content um, and things like that. And again, I don't think that's bad, right? Um, it just feels different and it means that we sometimes have to adjust our expectations. So we're going to talk about that a little bit too. Um, I think engagement has become less of a thing and a little bit less important than it used to be. I think engagement is still really, really important. I think algorithm wise, it's quite important, but I think sales and results wise, it's a little bit less important than I've ever seen it be. And that's really interesting. Um, and I'm someone who's like very pro engagement. If you know me at all, <laughs> you know, I am very pro engagement. So this isn't like a case to not engage. It's just happening a little bit less. Like even this live stream is such a good example right now, right? Like people are just a little bit less likely sometimes to do a ton of commenting or whatever, even if they're liking it, even if they're enjoying it, even if they're watching it, right? Like, I think it's just interesting how that has begun to shift. And I feel like most people just won't say this stuff out loud yet <laughs> because they're like, oh, I don't know. Is it just me or whatever? But it's not. So that's fine. Um, but I think it's stuff we need to be talking about more. So I think engagement has become a little bit less of a thing. Like I think, for example, like live streams, I feel like live views across the board have gone down. And again, I'm talking, uh, like norm, not outlier, certainly like 
you can get a ton of uh, a ton of comments on a live stream. It's not to say you can't. It's just that the way that used to be versus the way that is now really has shifted um, in terms of like how people are relating to that, how they're thinking about it, how likely they are to engage, all of that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, if you're if you're experiencing that, feel free to feel free to share that as well. But it's just what I'm seeing, right? Like live viewership has just gone down. I think that we also just realize that we don't have to be live, right? Like it's amazing if we can be. And also like y'all know that you can come back in here and rewatch this later. You can get it on my website. You can um, get it in my Friday email. Like I think there's just this way where we've all gotten conditioned to the fact that like I'm going to be able to consume that content at some point. So like, we don't feel the pull to be live in a way we did when that was like so new and so exciting. Um, another thing I think is that, um, well, I guess let's, let's go off this tangent here and then I'll go somewhere else. But, um, I even think like, you know, likes are going down, like let, let alone like live views or whatever. I think likes in general are going down. Obviously they're going to go away on, um, some platforms, but, um, you know, it, it, it's not necessarily bad. It's just a thing that's happening. Uh, and what we have to do is not let that put us in panic mode. Right. Um, and I think again, for a similar reason, I feel like we're just less incentivized to like a lot of things. Um, what's the upside to that for some of us? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think we're just conditioned that like, I will still see and seek out that content, whether I give it a like or not. I think obviously it's a nice thing to do to support people. And I will always go hard on the idea of like, if you want engagement, give it, if you want likes, give it like, I'm, I'm still about that, but I just see it matters less right now. And I feel like we're all just less incentivized to do it. Um, you know, I think there are a ton of people, I know for a fact, there are so many people that will watch and consume these lives and not even like it. And I don't even feel like, I don't feel mad about that. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that that's just like the tendency of where our, um, as a, on a broad scale, like where our interactions are going. I don't know if it's that we're kind of burned out on those interactions or we don't see them as valuable or whatever, but I think it's just a thing. Yeah. Shantae says, I totally agree with you. I've noticed this for myself and my clients as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it, it's, and that's why it's so good to talk about because it's like, I feel like this is one of the things that's happening in our industry where we're all seeing this and kind of talking about it behind closed doors, but we need to just like vocalize it, I think, so that it feels like, okay, this is just a change we get to adapt to. This is not like fire drill, something has gone wrong. Um, I think uh, story views are going down. I think that's been a really consistent conversation that story views have gone down. Um, and listen, I think there are ways to hack a lot of this, right? Like if I wanted to get more comments on this live stream, I could easily be like, hey guys, if you comment and tell me how many years you've been in business, I'm gonna give away a free session with me. Great, everyone comments, engagement goes up. Like it, that's not a bad thing. I'm totally not against like hacking it sometimes or like, you know, one of the things on stories is like, if you start the day with a selfie from that day, you're more likely to get better views. Like, and again, that's for like in this moment, who knows if that doesn't change next week, but like there are some ways to like play the game on certain things like this, but there is also just an overarching shift around it. And so again, I'm not like opposed to playing the game, but I want to talk about later how sometimes it becomes so much about playing the game that we lose context of what business and sales are really about. Um, hey, Jen, thank you for being here. I um, appreciate you. Appreciate you saying hi. Um, okay, so I said story views. Um, and then the other thing is ads are getting way more expensive. Um, also, something I'm hearing across the board is that ads are just more expensive than they've ever been and the rate at which the expense is growing is also greater than it's ever been. Um, and so with all of this, I think it can feel really intense. Like, oh my gosh, organic growth is harder. Oh my God, ads are getting more expensive. Likes are down, engagement's down. Da -da -da -da. Like it can feel like everything is like cracking almost, right? Um, and what I wanna say about all that is like, 
I have seen all of that to be true. And big and very important. I have not seen sales super impacted by this at all. Right? Like, isn't that interesting? Like, I am still seeing client sales continue to rise really significantly, honestly. And so even though these things are going down, I am not seeing a direct like hit on that in a lot of the actual like sales revenue outcomes. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> Belinda. Belinda says, this is a pep talk. LOL. I'm getting to the pep talk part, Belinda. It's going to be, we're going to turn this ship around. If anyone listened, Pat, what, what are we at? Like minute 14 or something. If anyone listened just up to minute 14, they're going to be like, bye. But if you listen past minute 14, you're going to get a pep talk. <laughs> you guys are ganging up on me now. <laughs> Hi, Rita. Um, it is, it's going to be a pep talk. Okay, so here's why it's a pep talk, because I don't see it impacting sales. I just see it as a change that's happening in our industry, right? Where like people's buying and consuming behavior is just different, is what I'm trying to get at. So where we used to think, well, the amount of likes I get directly impacts the amount of sales I can expect, or the amount of engagement I get is the biggest determiner of how well my program will perform. And I think that's changing. I really, really do. <laughs> Janelle just hopped on. Well, good. You missed the whole first part that everyone's mad at me about. Um, <laughs> Tristan's had to reapply his eyeliner twice. Uh-oh. We got to get you waterproof for these. I'll, I'll warn you, Tristan, when it's not going to be the peppiest of pep talks. Um, <laughs> so funny. But Again, I do not see sales impacted. So I want you to hang on to that. And I want to say, cool, so what do we do about this? And how do we adapt? And how can this be exciting? And how can this be better even? Like, think about how much time, energy, and effort like so many of us have felt like we were supposed to spend chasing likes and things like that, right? What if like it was shifting in a way where that didn't have to be our focal point? Or even think about the normalization of how you're supposed to have like a hundred thousand followers or whatever, right? Mm. What if that wasn't like the thing anymore? You know, I think what's so interesting is that businesses that made lots of money existed before all of this. So like all of this being social, you know? And so like, there are still plenty of ways to make money. And I'm not even saying don't use social. I think for sure use social. I think we're just going through a shift. But my point in saying all of that is I feel like we sometimes get really rigid in our thought process around things. Um, where like the thought process sometimes becomes like, well, the only way to success is 100K followers or whatever. I'm just making that number up. The only way to success is more likes. The only way... And I feel like what's happening right now in our industry is just like beautifully challenging some of those beliefs to be like, but is that true? Is that this? Is that that? Does that make sense? Um, <laughs> DL Tristan. Hi, Jess. She says, is it not impacting sales for coaching or one-on-one -on -one or also more passive products offers? I'm curious what you've seen. I really haven't seen anything that impacted, to be honest. Um, I think like obviously for passive products or offers, if you're seeing um, an in increase in ad spend and the way you're making sales off those passive products is through ads, then you're going to potentially have a, you know, hit to your profit margin and that kind of thing. But I mean, um, so I guess that's, you know, definitely potentially true um, in terms of products, ads, that kind of stuff. So there's like an element there, but I don't think that as a whole, people just are buying less because of that, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I just launched a product that I thought for sure from social would sell. Let me spoil the ending. It did it. And I'll be talking about it on my podcast. Yes. And listen, like Rita, I think what's helpful to see there is like, it doesn't mean we don't go through changes or shifts during this time period, or it doesn't mean we all don't have to make adjustments. But I think that like what I want to make really clear on this live stream and where the pep talk part is coming in is I think it can feel doomsday-ish almost. And I don't think that's what's happening at all. I think it's just another normal shift 
on social, in our industry, all of those kind of things. It doesn't mean there's never bumps during those shifts. I think like there always is. Um, it just means we like get creative, do different things, find different ways. Um, and you know, that I think is really exciting for us as entrepreneurs, because, um, that's kind of like what we like to do. Like, even though we secretly like love, hate it, you know, there's like this element where we're like, yes, what's next? What can I figure out? And I think this is the moment that we're in. Um, yes. Awesome. Jess. Uh, oh, but also, oh, Shantae says, yep, it makes sense. Challenging those beliefs. Heck yes, exactly. Um, Rita said also Lacey is right. It's still sold just in an unconventional way. Exactly. Exactly. Um, listen to Rita's podcast for all the deets. Belinda says, even personally, I'm liking less. I'm still consuming, but I've personally just taken a little more space. Belinda, thank you for saying that because I think that's exactly it. I was going to say that, like, even if I watch my own behavior, my personal behavior has changed quite a bit regarding social too. Like, I do think I just naturally like less because I don't think about it in the same way almost, right? Or like, I know I even naturally consume, um, things in a different way. Like I would be very unlikely to come live to something, things like that. So I do think that if you watch your own behavior and notice, well, like this is shifting in me, but it's also not shifting my buying either. So that's interesting. So watch it in yourself too. I, I mean, I don't know. I think there's a lot of reasons, a lot of reasons that this could be happening. I mean, something I always try to remind myself is like, Instagram and Facebook and all of these platforms are just businesses too. So it's like how Instagram is um, prioritizing reels right now. They're just a business that's trying to keep up with and compete with other um, competitors in their industry. And we're almost just at the mercy of that. Does that make sense? And so it, it, it that can feel bad, but I also think it's helpful perspective to be like, this is just like a shift that that business is going through that kind of rolls down and impacts some of our businesses. And so we can just adjust to that and that will change too. You know, like reels are prioritized right now. Those might get deprioritized later. Stories were a thing. They're less prioritized now. Like, so if we can kind of just be like, oh, that's probably always going to be how it is because Instagram is just a business competing with other businesses um, in their space too. And we don't make it feel like, oh my gosh, now I have to be X kind of way, or now I have to do X kind of thing. But like, now I just get to decide what my relationship is with using that platform, that, uh, that business in that way. I feel like it does feel a little more business and a little more neutral than it feeling like so intense or like something has gone wrong or something is bad. Does that make sense? Let me know if you guys agree with that. Um, but Belinda, I need you to hurt all my things. Belinda, now you have to like all of Rita's stuff. You're, you have outed yourself and Rita means support. <laughs> yes. Likes are so addictive. Exactly. Like I think it wouldn't, it's not necessarily bad that we're moving in that direction. Hi, Morgana. So nice to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, okay. So lots of change, lots of things. Um, but I think where we have to get back to is seeing so much of this as like, this is just a marketing strategy. And we'll talk about what uh, those things are built on. Hey, Steph, um, thank you for coming. So we'll talk about what some of those things are built on. But first things first, yes, a lot of things are changing. No, it's not just you. <laughs> like number one goal today is to be like, this is happening to most people. This is not just you. And again, this is like, not to say there aren't outliers or like things that are blowing up or whatever. I mean, to be quite transparent, like the stuff that I see blowing up is definitely um, real still. Just is. I don't know that it's converting better or worse, to be honest, but I think in terms of like the likes or engagement, but again, I think that that's even shifting how important that is going to continue to be for sales. And again, I don't see sales shifting, I actually see them increasing. Um, but it's just that like our behavior is not so much that like I would only buy that thing if I had come to a live stream. I would only buy that thing if I had liked a bunch of other things. Like, I just don't feel like any of us are buying in that way as much anymore. And so again, permission, transparency, it's not just you. Um, okay, so we have to start seeing a lot of these things as 
just strategies and being willing to shift our mind around them, challenge beliefs, look at those in new ways. So I just want to give an example of something here and then we'll go into more specifics, but I was having this conversation with someone recently and I thought, oh, like that's an important conversation that I want to add to this. So we were talking about, um, like how that someone was feeling like desperate for offering calls or doing personal outreach. And I was like, well, do you feel desperate getting on a, on a live stream? They were like, well, no, no, it's just like, you know, when it's personal or whatever. And I was like, that's so interesting. I get it. I'm not, I'm not like saying that that person is insane. I think we all feel that way to some extent, but like, it's so interesting because those are just different marketing strategies, right? Like personal outreach or getting on a live stream there, like nothing is better or worse on a hierarchy or le- something you're like less likely to do or more likely to do or whatever. It's literally just like a neutral marketing strategy. Do you prefer <laughs> outreach? Do you prefer video? Like what's your strategy? Right. And so I think we have to get back to looking at things as just like, this is a neutral strategy. It doesn't mean I only do this. If I'm successful, I only have this many likes. I only have this many followers, whatever. Like, I feel like I'm a really good example of this. And obviously, you know, my business model is different, but like, like if you check out my Instagram, I'm putting out like very good content. I'm just saying so good. No, I'm kidding. But like, seriously, I do put out an incredible amount of good content and value there, but I don't do, um, a lot of real, well, I don't do any reels. <laughs> um, and I also like forever ago had one of those, um, I guess it was a bot. I don't know, like where it would like things and follow and unfollow, like, I don't know, five years ago or something like that. And so I feel like my account has just always had, um, challenges ever since then. So my point in saying all of that is like, I'm still putting out really great content. Yes. I have that thing from years ago, but like, obviously we've continued to grow. Um, and like, I'm getting maybe, I don't know, 40 likes on a post or something like that. And we're going to million dollar a year, you know, and I, Again, I know the model is different and honestly, I know 40 likes is still fucking great. But my point in saying that is for the number of followers I have for the high level of content I create and all of that, like the numbers aren't really there, but it's not impacting. So I just want to say that. And it's also like, if I think about like the 40 people that liked that, Like I think of how meaningful those are now. So I think we have to start seeing that kind of stuff as so meaningful now where we're not like, it's only 40 people, which is like how it used to be. Now it's like 40 people took the time to heart that in a, in a time where it's almost like we're too cool to even do that anymore. Like that's incredible. So anyway, shift in perspective there, I think is really important. It doesn't have to impact the results. And also I think it means even more now. And it can be like special in a different way. Um, (laughs) Jen says, no, seriously, it's good. See, it's really good. It's not just me. Right. Um, uh, Nima says, it's not just me. The algorithms don't hate me personally. Exactly. It's not just you. I promise is literally again, not to say there's not outliers and I'm not trying to have this be doomsday ish by any means where it's like, nobody's going to (laughs) get likes or engagement, like abandoned ship. Like that's not what I mean, but yeah, it's not just you. I really do feel like this is just happening um, more and more. And that's just cool. It's fine. We're just going through a shift. Um, good, good. Ariel says, love that shift so much. Um, I'm stealing that title for my clubhouse room. It's not just you. Exactly. It's not just you. But like you could say like, the algorithms don't personally hate you. I liked that one from Nima as well. Um, yeah, Ariel, exactly. It's like a hundred people in a room ask how we, wait, a hundred people in a room ask, ask how can we create relationships with them? Yes, exactly. I said that to a client the other day. I was like, um, cause she was saying her story views went down and I was like talking to her about how like they're really consistent, but they've been lower. And I was like, imagine like how you would feel if 200 people were showing up to hear you speak every day, um, that would be fucking wild. Right. And like, that's effectively what it is. And I think we're so much more careful about what we're giving our time and attention to right now, that people doing that is so, um, 
it's so important. And we have to stop making numbers mean everything. I think we're too quick and we've gotten too conditioned in this space where it's almost like if the number doesn't feel big, we write it off versus seeing the people behind it. And so why I think some of this is really good is because I think we're transitioning back to a space where we see the people behind this stuff. And that is going to be fucking magical in my opinion. Obviously I'm biased because that's how I like to operate anyway. So I feel like for me, I'm like, yes, <laughs> like this direction. So I get it. I'm not saying everyone's going to be like so excited about this. Personally, I feel rather jazzed, but I get it. It's a big shift and turn in our heads, right? <laughs> See Lazy coaching me even on her live stream. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, like a hundred people are watching you talk. Exactly, exactly. It's so huge when you think about it like that, right? And again, I think if we're giving out likes less, if we're giving out engagement less, just naturally, when we are, I think it means so much more. Like it's just so interesting to think about it like that. And I think that it will just be so different in terms of how we start to measure what looks successful or what doesn't. Um, and that can be really exciting. So a couple of things on how to make these shifts. I know I always preach this and I know I'm going to be a broken record here, but stick with me. And I promise I have a couple of new things at the end, but it's always going to come back to relationships. And I think we have to get away from this idea that we are not at a certain level of business. If we're willing to build one-on-one -on -one personal relationships, I think that just has to start going out the window. I feel like there was this time in our space where it was like, oh, like you, like you obviously aren't successful if you're doing that. And I think we're getting back to that is how you create success. That's always been how you created success. That's that always been how businesses have grown. And that is the one non-changing element to everything in this is how well do you cultivate relationships? And obviously we do it in different ways with different platforms at different times, but it will always continue to come back to that. And so if you think about like, well, I don't need to have a lake to cultivate a relationship. What other ways could I do that? Or like, maybe I only have a hundred and only, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I, well, whatever, maybe I only have 10 people viewing my stories. How do I go build a relationship with every one of those 10 people? By the way, if nine of them became clients and you were charging $2,000 a month, welcome to your 18K months. Do you know, like, that's what I think we have to get back to thinking about and looking at versus like the vanity metrics. And I think we've all been talking about how vanity metrics don't matter for a while, but I think we're just seeing it play out in practice in a different way. And so it's just almost time for us to like double down on that and almost like walk that talk more. Um, and again, like neutralize the strategy where it's a neutral thing to build those relationships, do personal outreach, whatever. It's not indicative of you not being at a certain level of success in your business or whatever. Like I think social like really took us to the point where we created these like untouchable people on these pedestals um, in our heads. And I think some of that's cracking around the edges. And again, I don't think that's a bad thing. Right. Um, I also think we all are getting wise to how much of this is smoke and mirrors. Like again, how much, even though like we're using engagement to hack the algorithm versus to be genuine or, you know, we know people are, um, kind of just doing this in different, in different ways. And again, I'm not totally against that. Like I personally have help with engagement. I have a team that helps me, um, do all that. I believe that enga engagement is really relevant, all of those kind of things. But I think that it's just happening in a way in which we're seeing that, um, that's not going to be the only thing we can depend on for growth anymore. It's going to be about like, how, um, willing are we to kind of like, um, what's the word? like be a real human and connect with our people. And again, I know I say this all the time, but I really think that, um, this is becoming more relevant than ever, um, like in such a big way. And like, yeah, that might take a little bit of a different level of time, energy, and effort. But like the way I kind of think about it is like, I would personally rather and feel much more fulfilled putting time, energy, and effort into things that build solid relationships versus into like, how can I hack the 
the ever changing algorithm. Like I feel like you can play that game. It's just like, you're going to feel like you're chasing your tail and it feels like a fire drill every time stuff comes up. Um, so if you can kind of get back to like, what does it look like for me to be willing to build personal relationships? I feel like that's always going to be the thing. I promise I have other thoughts on that, but like, we got to have that conversation because it's, it's literally always the fucking thing. Right. Um, Rita says, I personally think so many have gotten sucked into four hour work weeks and relationship building is something that to an extent can be automated and made more efficient, but also takes more personal touch time. You may have to put in more time. Absolutely. Hey, Lucy, no problem. Thank you for being here. And thank you for saying hi. Um, a hundred percent Rita. I totally agree with that. And I feel like for like what a lot of us are wanting in our business and for what, um, we're wanting people to pay for and things like that. Like it might just take that. Like, I kind of feel like the fact that we pedestal people who make a lot of money without having to do that, or like, don't even get me started on this conversation, but like how it's like seen as like the best thing. If someone can like make a really high ticket sale without a phone call, Again, if you choose that business model, like that's totally cool. But the fact that we think that that is the measure of success is the problem. Like I have a client, many clients who have a certain business model that doesn't necessitate um, the call and that's totally fine. But it's not because it's like, because we have to prove we're successful to do that. And that's what I feel like we have to get away from. And I totally agree with you, Rita. Like we have to kind of be willing to put in some of that time. So if I'm not going to hack it by like having my Instagram blow up to like 50,000, people overnight or whatever, like, could I spend 20 minutes today building relationships? Like that would be so fucking worth my time. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Morgana says, anytime I feel like something isn't working in my business, one-on-one, one-on-one relationships is the first place I go back to always, always, always. I so agree with that. Same, same, same. Um, Ariel says, yes, love that. Hi, Deepa. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, so like, I think that is just really changing and it doesn't have to look like a million hours a week, but to Rita's point, like, I do think the industry is going to shift away from this completely automated, um, relationship build to an extent because of how platforms are changing. Right. Um, so the other thing I would say that I think is working really well right now and just wanted to share this for um insight as well is I think that collaborations are working so well right now it's really interesting because like I was saying earlier I've been in this space for almost six years next month and um that used to be such a bigger thing I feel like when I first got into our space like that is like how people were growing and leveraging stuff is collaborations. And I feel like we've gotten so far away from that. And I almost feel like it is another one of those, like, I'm too good for that sometimes kind of things, or not even I'm too good for it. That's maybe not the way I mean to say it, but like, I shouldn't have to do that. Or if I was successful, I wouldn't be doing that. Or if people see me doing that, do they think it means something, et cetera, et cetera. But I feel like collaborations are so the thing that is helping right now, because it really is about like personal relationships and what trust you have built with somebody. So if you're connecting with someone, someone, oh my God, someone's audience who they trust that person, why does that feel hard for me to explain? If you're connecting with someone who you trust and have good synergy with, and then their audience sees you, that collaboration is sped up. Your relationship with those new people is sped up because you have that relationship foundation with the person you're doing it with and now with their people. And they feel like they already know you. It's almost like I met a new friend recently and who was a good friend of one of my other friends. And I feel like we just got connected so quickly and so fast because we had that friend in common. Does that make sense? So it like sped up our relationship. Um, so I think that's like what's happening with social and why collaborations are working so, so well right now, because we also know that a lot of this is just smoke and mirrors. Like, I think that's another reason why so much of this has changed. It feels so much like, um, like we're playing the game versus like, it's just organic social. And so I think we're just so much less likely and more hesitant. Like, you know, it's almost like 
you know that like, if you like your friend's post, who's like a beach body coach, they're going to message you or whatever. I'm kidding. It's not always true. I have no hate for beach body coaches whatsoever, but I do think we like hold back because it feels like, like, oh my gosh, like this is just like a whole game I'm in versus like, oh, I just really trust that person. And I really like value our relationship. And so I value their opinion on things and whatever. So we're so much more hip to the idea that there's smoke and mirrors. So with collaborations, I think it takes that wall down a little bit because it feels like you're meeting a friend of a friend, which you're way more open to versus if I had just like randomly met this girl, I don't know that we would have gotten close quickly at all. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm, (laughs) Sarah and I recorded uh, a few happy thoughts, a couple of happy thoughts podcasts last night. Like my words were just not coming out. And then I talked to one of my clients this morning and I kept being like, I'm going to say a word and this is not the word I mean, but you know me well enough to know what word I mean. Luckily she's beautiful and knows my, <laughs> knows my idiosyncrasies so well. So she was able to follow, but words the past couple of days have just been real touch and go for me. So anyway, that's the thing that's making relationship building easier is collaborating because it fast forwards the relationship, right? Yes. Yeah, Rita, that's such a good point. People ask how I've gotten so much traction on Clubhouse, 100% collaboration base. Rita, 100%. Rita has crushed it on Clubhouse. She's vastly surpassed 10K um, followers on there in just a few months' time, all of that kind of stuff. And it is entirely based on how good she is at collaborating. And that's where real traction is taking off right now. Yeah, Morgana says so, so true. Collaborations are infinitely valuable. Exactly. Ariel says, oh yes, organic social, really leaning into what does that look like on both ends, being on social and consuming. Exactly. It feels like we've gotten away from that. And in some regard, like that is why I appreciate that some of the platforms I feel like are almost like pushing back on that and changing it. And other ways it feels like they're making me jump through even more hoops. Like, I feel like that's like my protest of reels right now. Personally, not actually, like I I really do think they work and I think they're awesome, but I'm like, just feels like more hoops. (laughs) to jump through when I just want to like tell people stuff and like help them and whatever. And I don't want to spend like a freaking 45 minutes, like recording, um, a reel. I'd rather spend 45 minutes on here, just like delivering a bunch of value. So like, I do feel like we just see the, see the stuff of it and it doesn't feel as natural anymore. And we can kind of get jaded around that. So, you know, I think that's true, but I don't think that any of our desire to, buy, to get support, to be coached, to um, have any of those things has changed. So does that make sense? Like the way in which we're engaging with it has changed, but our actual desire to have the thing, purchase the support, be in the program, get the tool, buy the template, like the desire there hasn't changed at all. And so that's, what's exciting. And so if you're leveraging that in different ways, like through more personal um, touch points through collaborations, through relationship building. Like I I think your people are totally there. Um, And just kind of remembering that I feel like is so key. Um, There was something else I was going to say around that. Hmm. What was I just saying? The, hmm. yeah, the desire is still there. Yeah. So I, I think like, the takeaway from this too is like, how are you tapping into that desire that is still present? Like, I think what I really want to be clear about all of this with is like, just because things are changing and how we're engaging and how we're seeing things happen and your story views and whatever, what I want you to hold fast to is that your people's desire for the shift and transformation you provide is not being impacted. Right. And doesn't that just feel like, cause when we see that it can be like, oh my God, people just don't want what I have to offer. They're not liking it. Da, 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 da that is not what I'm seeing change. Like people still want what they want. Um, I also wonder too, and I don't know if you guys think this at all, but one of the like, you know, theories that I have around this too, is that, you know, life is kind of getting back to normal. So like the amount of consumption we were doing in 2020 compared to, I think the amount of consumption a lot of us want to be doing now on social has gone down drastically. I also think we're just like, outliving our lives a little bit more than we were last year. So I think there's some natural cadence to that happening as well. Like I know I've been just on social less in general, um, in the last month than I probably had in the previous year. Um, uh, you know how you get those like screen time reports. Mine was like, your screen time went down like two hours and da 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 a day. And I was like, Oh shit. Like, I think it's just 
somewhat natural in terms of like how we're getting back out and engaging with the world. So that might be part of it as well. But again, with that, I don't actually think any of our desire to buy or our buying behavior has changed. In fact, I feel like almost the opposite. I feel like last year made us realize how much we want to go after things, chase things. Like I think the online business industry is fucking exploding still from last year. You know, I think people's desire to um, take care of their health, get more support, all of that kind of stuff. Like that is so much bigger even. It's just these little things that happen along the way. Um, like story views or whatever. And I know that can feel scary, especially if you maybe started your business three years ago and the entire way that you built it is with story views. I fully can hear how that would be exceptionally jarring, but I would say two things there. One is nothing says you can't still build with story views. It just might look like your views look different, but what are you doing with those views is what's going to matter. Right. Um, Another thing I would say is that it also is a call to not get too stuck, right? Like, just like I was saying earlier, like part of me is like protesting reels for a, a specific reason. Like at some point, I'm probably gonna make myself do them. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like willing to have my little protest moment. I'm also an Enneagram 8, so I kind of like have those and require those as part of my process. <laughs> But like, eventually I'll probably just be like, how can I get on board with this? Um, and so again, it's like, you can kind of do both. Like I'm still always probably going to do content like this because this is what um, feels most natural and best to me. And at some point, like I'll probably build in different ways. So I think it's just holding a little bit of that both and right now where it's like, just because how you're used to engaging with a specific tool is changing, it doesn't mean you have to just stop doing it or that it's not worthwhile or that you can't still make it work. And business is a lot about innovation, right? And being willing to do different things. So how willing can you get around some of that too? Like, I think there's a balance there. Um, Tristan said, God, I'd count for all those coaches who made their clients date. Those clients are now out in the world, living their lives and finding balance, drastic drop in consumption for those fellas. Tristan, I can't imagine who you might be talking about. Um, but yeah, like, I think, I mean, I think that is a good example though of like, you know, your consumption has changed based on life circumstances. And I think for so much of us, that is true. Like it may not be dating, although yay. Um, but like, it might just be like how much we're willing to like see our people or how often we're going out to dinner or just stupid shit like that, you know, that like really does change things. So like I have, uh, exhausted my ramp, but I think like to, to give the takeaways here, I think it's, realize that this doesn't have to impact sales. Like the number one thing I want you to take away from this is don't let your mindset shit the bed over this one because that's where it gets dicey. Like if all of a sudden you see views go down and you start making that mean a ton of shit, that means my launch isn't going to be successful. That means people don't like what I'm selling. That means I'm like, you know, people think I suck. Like that means... <laughs> This was one from, from a client recently. Cause it just happens. People used to think I was cool and now they don't. I'm like, no, babe, everyone's stories are going down, right? You got to be careful what you're telling yourself there. So be really careful what mindset stuff is happening with this and what you're making it mean. Um, is number one. Number two is <laughs> yeah. Brittany, that is what I said. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is what I said. <laughs> Um, number two is get back to really focusing on relationships and get out of that mindset that like you wouldn't do personal outreach or build personal relationships or give one-on-one -on -one time or answer one-on-one -on -one questions. If you had made it, that is not true. It is a neutral strategy. Um, I know plenty of seven and multi seven figure business owners who still use that as like a very big part of their strategy. And that's part of why they are seven and multi seven bigger business owners, to be honest with you. Um, so don't, don't feel like that's a thing that you can't do. I would double down on that. Um, I think it's going to be less like I'm hiring the person because they seem like a big deal and they have like a lot of followers and likes and more like I'm hiring that person because like I deeply felt seen by them and like they could help me. Like, I really think we're going into a season of that. Um, and then the last, you know, piece is like, well, there's two more pieces I want to say. But one of them is leverage what you're doing, but be willing to adapt. So it's like, don't abandon ship. I really am like working to remind clients of that right now. Like 
you know, it's so tempting when you see something go down drastically to think like, oh gosh, maybe this isn't working. Like for example, um, even my live video views in this group in terms of like how, um, what's the word? Like reach is how I want to say it. Like the amount, the reach my videos are getting has gone down for sure, for sure. Um, but I want to be careful to also not make that mean like, oh, then why am I doing these live streams every week? Well, I'm doing these live streams every week because they serve me really well. They help me build relationships. They always convert really well. And whether, you know, their reach is 3000 or their reach is 30, like I still know how well that's going to serve ultimate, you know, results, conversion, impact, whatever. So keep doing what you're doing find new ways to leverage it again. So like if your story views have gone down drastically, are you connecting with the people who are viewing things like that? Um, and then the last part is use organic collaborations and things like that, where like you're building trust off of other people's relationships, again, coming back to relationships and how that works. Like that's just working so well right now. And again, it makes sense with all this context in mind, right? So those are the things I don't have all the answers by far. I think that, um, we shall see is kind of how I feel about it. And, you know, more shall unfold as it always does, but just really wanted to make sure this wasn't something anyone in here was sitting with going like, oh my God, as Nima said, like the algorithm must hate me or whatever. No, we're all here. My, all of this is true. Like my, like I was saying, my, my views have gone down all the things and the results aren't being impacted. So hope that is helpful. Um, if y'all have any more thoughts on this, or if you're watching the replay, feel free to let us know, but mostly just appreciate you all. Again, I think, um, something I want to say is that how I was saying earlier that like, because some of this is happening, it makes you appreciate it so much more. Like, I just can't say enough how much I appreciate those of you who come, who watch, who like, who tell me it meant something to you, whatever. Like I cannot underscore enough how much that is something I value and appreciate and y'all so much. And you guys are so beautiful and great about doing that in this community. So like from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I hope that you know that I never see it as a number and I never take it for granted and that it feels like such a privilege. So I love you all. I appreciate you. I hope this helped. I hope this normalized it. I hope this reminds you that like changes the constant. It's cool. We'll keep rolling with it. Relationships are also the constant though. And you can always fall back on those. So I love you guys. I hope that you have a beautiful Monday and I will see you guys next week. Bye.